Good morning, good morning. Today I'm going to go and feed these animals and also down in the orchard I'm hoping to trim the tops off those trees that the pigs ruined and get those nice and safe so they don't rot out. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to carry everything, but we'll give it a go. You can come with me. First things first, I'm going to pick some grass out of one of my gardens in the survival garden. I mulched it all with some barley straw and uh, it has all grown some barley. So uh, waste not, want not. I'm going to turn some of it into uh, rabbit food. And to cut grass around here we have one of these rice knives uh, I find them really helpful, nice and sharp, really quick to cut grass with If I'm to be entirely honest with you I have just realised that I did not harvest the last of my onions out here and they've gone yuck uh, Unfortunately we've had our first lot of frost and it has pretty much just ruined the onions um, And then my husband has tipped the last of the wood ash over the top of them so I think that's it for this season. Unfortunately, that was um, a bit of a whoopsie on my part, but these things happen. So I'm gonna grab some of this barley grass and we'll go down and feed the animals. We have got an escaped chicken. And to be honest, I don't know how she got out. Oh, there we go. The entire chicken house are all out. Someone has not shut something or they've just discovered a hole or something. There are chickens out everywhere. But this one is not meant to be in the garden. Somehow she has climbed over the fence. I'm just going to go inside and find the staple gun because obviously there has been a breach in the chicken house somewhere and they have all got out. So the staple gun is missing, I suspect it has just gone to work in Matthew's work van. So these chickens will have to enjoy their day of free ranging today and we will have to lock them up tonight. But we'll have a look while we're down there and see if we can work out where they got out. Alright, let's grab these things and we will head down to the chickens. While I was lying awake last night, I was trying to sleep but for whatever reason I couldn't. Um, I was thinking that maybe we might use some of the trays I've got for the garden and see if maybe we could grow some barley fodder for both the pigs and for the rabbits over the winter. Uh, so when Matthew orders some more grain today I might get him to get some whole barley as well. I have grown barley fodder in the past for the rabbits and we even built like a big setup to grow it in but I was finding <laughs> what happened was the sparrows found a hole and the sparrows got in and then once the sparrows got in our old dog Daisy decided to chase the sparrows so she would then jump on it and she ripped all the plastic that was around it and then eventually she just pulled the whole thing onto the ground and it just smashed and that was the day I gave up. Now we have the tunnel house and I've got some shelves in there and I think maybe if we just did it over the winter we could probably use the space we've already got. I'm really aware that we're feeding our rabbits a lot of pellets at the moment and they're quite expensive and there's not so much grass around to be picking them grass and taking it to them. So this might be a solution. Wow. We'll give it a go and see how it goes. Can you see the goats way, way over there? I don't think you can. They're right there. Far, far away in the paddock. That is the one nice thing to this bizarre shape of land. Is that if they're over there we can see them. And at least they're not up here barring really loudly so you can't hear anything I'm saying. Guys are meeting us up at the window. Hello, what are you doing? Why are you up here? Now it's going to be quite loud in there, so I will just go in and get done what needs done. You guys can just wait out here. Now, the main reason I want to cut the tops off of these trees 
that the pigs have destroyed is because if they're left the way they are, the rain that's coming in the next few days is going to get down into the top of them and unfortunately it'll cause them to rot out and I'll probably lose all the trees. So what I'm hoping to do is cut them off on a bit of an angle and seal them so that they don't get water in them and hopefully it'll stop them rotting even though they have been quite heavily damaged. So hopefully that does the job. During the summer we do actually let those chickens out to wander around. Uh, but over the winter they just make everything so muddy and messy that, and there's not as much green grass around, that we actually keep them in their really large run and we bring green things to them. So they get veggie scraps and they get grass and they get weeds and all those sorts of things. So they're still getting access to all that healthy nutritional stuff but they're not ruining the place at the same time. Kind of like our pigs really. How the heck am I going to carry all of this? We might have to take two trips. Right, you wait here, I'll take these along and I'll come back for you. And here is Mama Bunny and her four little babies. Marigold and she's hungry. She's like, where's my food at, woman? These guys locked up. They just get in the way. You guys might remember Spazzy from the other video. He's the one making all the noise that we hear. Uh, his hair's not usually that colour. My daughter has dyed it pink. And over the back there is Hazel. And I better get down there and feed those pigs before they escape. This is the other reason I hate having these chickens out here. They just kick all of this dirt down onto the path and make it really slippery. So I'm going to have to come along here and flip it all off. And this is how they end up putting the stuff all over the pathway. I mean, they're having lots of fun, but... I don't like slipping in the mud very much. <laughs> My next question with these pigs. Thank you Rooster, is I'm not sure how much we actually need to be feeding them because usually they free range on grass and they just eat what they feel like they need to eat. So it's a wee bit of an experiment trying to work out how much we need to be feeding them. But so far we seem to be doing alright, there's often a little bit left there rejected so obviously they're getting enough that they feel like they don't need to, oh there's Roosters, they feel like they're getting enough that they don't need to be eating it. Right, let's feed some of this poultry. So the worst thing about looking for a hole in the netting is that it's really hard to see where a hole is in something you can barely see anyway. But I think I found it, and I think it's been here since our boar escaped the other day, and I think he's tried to get in here and the chickens have only just found it. Because if you see down here, this netting has been shoved really hard and it was shoved inwards. So I think I'm going to have to, it doesn't quite reach to peg back down, so I'm going to put another board on top of here and then staple that on the back. But unfortunately the repairs will have to wait until the staple gun comes home. In the meantime I found a few escaped eggs. They might go to the piggies because I'm not sure how old they are. 
And unfortunately, despite how destructive these guys are when they're out, I can't lock them up right now because it's egg laying time. And if I lock up the ones that are inside, the ones that are locked outside will just lay the eggs anywhere. So I'm going to have to leave the door open to let them all come back in to their nesting boxes. I might have to send the chicken ninjas down later to round them up for me. I need to put some steps in down here. Now the last thing I need to do is to collect the eggs, but I'm not going to do that until I have finished doing what I need to do in the orchard. Because if I leave the eggs in a bucket near where these escaped chickens can get to, they're going to climb on it and knock it over and I'll end up with scrambled eggs. So I'm going to go down and do what I need to do in the orchard first and then I will collect the eggs. A long while ago, when we first moved here, we had the great idea of doing what the roads do and using poultry netting to let our chickens out. It was before we had a run, we just had a house that they were in and then they had free reign of the 10 acres. So we decided that we would use some poultry netting. To be honest, it mostly worked. They escaped a lot. Our ground here is not flat and beautiful. It is lumpy and angled and they always managed to find a way to get under it or over it or they'd tip it over or there was always some way that they were escaping. Uh, so we did have it when we brought the pigs down here we did have it standing all the way along this driveway behind all these sheds to stop them escaping up through there. But unfortunately, uh, one reason or another, we couldn't electrify it properly and it just got lost in the grass. So like this, it is just completely and utterly overgrown. In there, believe it or not, is some fence. You can see it down the bottom there. So Talia, my eldest daughter, bless her heart, has come out here and slowly but surely worked her way along this fence and she has freed up all except that last maybe three or four metres of this 20 something metre fence. This fence wasn't cheap but it also wasn't what we needed and uh, life just gets busy and so it got forgotten and the long grass just grew up which is frustrating but it kind of just is how it is when you have so much to do right so she is managing to salvage this there are holes in it and there are a few bits that are a bit broken but hopefully it will be mendable and we'll be able to use it again she has pulled it up and flicked half of it over that boundary fence across here and used it to make that little pen up there for the silkies that girl's ingenuity never ceases to amaze me let's have a look at this orchard and see what damage these pigs have done I can't remember who it was, but there is somebody that subscribes to leaving their trees to sheer and total utter neglect. And that is very much what we have done to these trees down here. The ones that have survived have done really well. We have lost quite a few, and I have got some more grafted apple trees that I plan on moving down here. I was going to do it today, but I think it's going to pour with rain shortly. So I'm just going to do the essential bits, and we'll see how we get on. Down here it's a little more evident what sort of damage these pigs have done. This tree is still alive, but it is supposed to be vertical. There's another tree along the other end that they've done the same thing to. They're just completely flattened. So I'm not sure if I'll leave them up on this mound. This, I think, is our surge outflow. It's not gross down here, but it is quite wet. And the trees that are planted below it are doing really, really well. But the ones up on the mound are not doing so well. And I think underneath, I think there's only a little bit of topsoil in hindsight. So what I actually plan on doing is probably pulling all of these out and finding somewhere over by the fence line to put them in. Previously, I haven't been able to plant anything in the fence line because there were really big pine trees over the other side and they sucked most of the moisture out of the ground so my plan is to move these over there because now the pine trees aren't there the ground is just like normal dampness as opposed to bone dry uh, but again I'll see how I get on I want to fix these little trees that have had the tops chewed off first this tree here is grafted you can see the graft is sealed nice and tightly there but they have snapped the top two pieces off it does have a tiny little leaf left on it so what i'm going to do is cleanly cut the ones that they've snapped
and put some pruning paste on them. Again, I think my sharp secateurs have gone with the work van this morning. So I've left with my older ones. Unfortunately, my pruning paste has all gummed up. Why is nothing easy? Right, hopefully that'll do that tree. And we'll move on and find the next one. Now this is the one that I noticed was quite bad. Oh, and I'm hoping that the graft at the top is still okay. Oh yeah, it's still green. I'll just seal that up before any rain or germs or anything can get in it. The problem is when the top of the tree is left crunched like this, the rain gets down in the top of it and the top of it can rot out and that can eventually kill the tree. So we're trying to avoid that by cutting the top off nice and smooth on an angle so the water can run off and sealing the top of it with a little bit of pruning paste uh, to stop anything gross getting in there. So hopefully that tree will come away in the springtime, I guess time will tell really. So I'm going to wander around and see what else I can find. I have just found this lying on the ground, which is the top part of a grafted tree, I think, because it's still got the tape on it, and it is clearly not alive. So these pigs have done a real number on my orchard, and I'm a little sad about But when you need grass, they need grass. So I'm going to wander along and see what trees also need done. come with me off the tripod for a minute. I definitely found a few that needed the tops done and I'm really glad that I did because I'd prefer not to lose all the trees that I've put all that effort into grafting. Somebody has done a right number on this one and whilst it still has leaves on it, is it going to focus? Whoop. Nope. There we go. It's been eaten here and down the bottom here I suspect that might be a terminal crack. I don't think it's going to survive this for long. I think realistically we might get another year or two's growth out of it, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if it succumbs to something that has just been snapped and nibbled on. And to be honest, I'm, it might be the pigs, but it could also be rabbits or possums that have eaten this because this very top piece up here was also snapped off and the pigs can't reach that high so i'm not sure who's done it maybe a possum so i'm going to plan for this tree to probably not survive and unfortunately this tree here i think has pretty much been ring barked it has survived up until now, but that damage looks like it goes pretty much right around the trunk. I know it's autumn, but none of our other trees look nearly that dead at this time of year. And I think probably that has pretty much killed it. So I'm in two minds. Do I cut it off here and hope the graft comes away? Or do I leave it like this and hope it heals itself? Do you know what? I think I'm going to cut it off. It does seem such a waste to cut such such a big top off the tree. But um, I'm scared that it's going to succumb to some sort of disease and I'll lose the whole thing. So I have. I've cut it right back to some healthy wood and hopefully it'll come away in the spring. Did you happen to see where I put the lid for this? Because I seem to have lost it. I don't know where it is and it's definitely not in my pocket um honestly I can't even remember what color it is I'll have to look back on the video and see hopefully it's somewhere a little obvious uh right now the children have not come down they're not screaming hopefully they're not killing each other I'm gonna bring a shovel down or a spade I can never remember which one it is, is it a shovel or a spade I can't remember the one with the straight edge so I can move my trees um, before it rains. It is sort of a little spitty almost, 
but I thought I'll get the shovel and uh, get at least those pear trees that are all on funny angles and things try and get them into some decent ground I might even bring a couple of apple trees down with me so you wait here I'll go and grab the shovel and I'll be back in a minute Pretty sure this is the definition of just taking one trip. I went up to the house and no one was screaming so I ran away quickly and grabbed these so hopefully they behave themselves while I'm out here still. Now what I have here uh, these are three quince trees that I have grown from seed and over here is a selection of I think there's it's hard to tell they're all stacked together one two three four five I think there's eight apple trees that I have grafted of various types I had some troubles with the labels and a lot of them faded out and I can't tell what they are. Some of them I managed to get in time and I've put copper tags on them but a lot of the plastic labels the pen just faded. As you can see these have pretty much been neglected too and I've accidentally let the grass grow in a ring among them and they're also probably in far too smaller bags they should have been potted up again in springtime uh, but they got neglected. So it is what it is, they've survived this far. So I'm gonna put them in wherever there are some missing trees. And also over there, sort of closer to the fence line now that the big trees are down. I'm actually really surprised at how dry the soil actually still is despite all the rain we've had in the last couple of weeks. And it just kind of goes to show one, how little rain we actually got over the summer. And two, how much we probably do need to put in some sort of swale system. Previously I thought we didn't need to because when we get rain, we get truckloads of rain um, and all winter we have so much rain everything's really wet. But um, during the summer I have come to realise everything's really dry over the summer. I'm wondering whether we should put swales on contour, sort of, unfortunately my trees are planted parallel this way and contour is kind of this way so some of the trees might be a little bit in the way. Um, hindsight's 2020 I suppose but I think there's probably something we can do about putting even just mini swales on contour just to be able to catch some of the water and slow it down so it's not all running straight to the bottom because over the winter the bottom just becomes a big bog and up here whilst the flat bits are muddy it's quite dry considering how much rain we're actually getting. This is where I just pulled out one of those pear trees that was lying on its side and this is just dry crumbly dust basically and I was right there's not very much topsoil up here so I'm probably best to have moved those pears. So I'll get on and plant these apple trees before the rain sets in properly. Here looks pretty good to me I think there used to be a tree along here but it seems to have disappeared so we'll put in a quince bush. I love quinces I love the smell of them I know they're an old-timey tree that a lot of people don't know about these days but the perfume from a ripe quince is absolutely divine and I love making quince paste and having it with blue cheese and again I know blue cheese isn't everybody's favourite. Quince also make a really yummy pie especially if you combine it with some apples. Even just to sit the ripening quince on your countertop so that you can enjoy the smells. So I have actually put in quite a few quince trees, most of them are still quite small. One of them I was hoping to get fruit from this year, but then we got a really raging big wind and unfortunately it blew them all off. Quince are commonly used these days as rootstock for a lot of pears. So if you find that you've got a pear tree that's coming away from the rootstock, it is probably a quince. And it's entirely up to you, you can just leave it to grow some quince if you want. They grow well together. There are named, named varieties of quince you can get, uh, but the ones that grow on rootstock will give you fruit just the same. I'm not staking these or anything I like to just let the wind do its thing I find that trees end up much stronger if you just let the wind blow them the only time I stake them is if animals are trying to knock them over 
uh, because they're a lot stronger and abrupt than the wind is. Um, and also quince don't grow massive, so I'm planting these more like, almost like a hedge. They're only a couple of meters, maybe, maybe six feet apart, if that. And I'm just putting them in. I'm not going to water them because it is about to rain. Don't know if I mentioned that yet or not. I know I have. Right, on to these apple trees. Luckily, whilst the ground here is really dry, it's not too hard. There was one bit trying to get through the grass though that I bent my daughter's spade. I think it's I think it's gonna be okay. It did ping back. Sorry, Talia. Well that was successful. The rain held off, the children held off, I managed to get everything in the ground. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I will see you next time. You forgot to remind me to collect the eggs. I'll go and do that. What chaos is going on in here? So much. This one's flax weaving. And these ones. And these ones are playing Lego and yelling a lot, apparently. Doip. Oh, I've got to zoom back. There now. What did you make? Uh, I forgot what they're called. The corner? Yeah. Yay! You made a hat. Yay.